after looking at um, a round hole, now well, we, we, we did see a, a nice uh, stress concentration. Uh, now we can look at a different geometry, the square hole. So I obviously I, I did that uh, separately, just modified modified the uh, geometry in Design Modeler and then add to um, to, uh, to upload one to ch to uh, yeah I forgot the technical term but just click on a on model and it had to reimport the geometry and, and that was not too difficult. That's a good exercise for you to to try that. Anyway, um, now the mesh, I have put the mesh back to its best, so quadratic mesh, I have removed uh, triangular, so this is an excellent mesh, also it's very regular, obviously at 5 millimeters, it's very nice, this is quite a lovely mesh. Okay, so I solved, uh, let's have a look at the results, so let me check first the um, stress, so we expect it to be at well, it should be 100 here. Let's let's show the results and uh, let's put some probes just to confirm things. Yeah, 100 here should be 90 something. Around here, 97, whichever 98, all the symmetry. So yeah, that's fine. So what have we got here? A maximum at 194 megapascal, possibly, and that's for the average and the unaverage. Ah, different position and different value. Right. I suggest that things are not converged yet or not quite right so what we can do our evil trick let's go to the averaged and insert insert a convergence uh, let's force it to be at 0 0.3 percent so it's quite stringent and solve again so what have we got 195 solving and it's going to to, to increase value so what have we got Quite a big jump, quite a big jump, a change, 11% changes, uh, an increase in, in, in nodes. What did it look like, out of interest? Uh, yes, it's, it's basically refining the mesh locally. Almost as if we had, by hand, inc added a sizing in the mesh with half of the size. Uh, are we happy with that? No, we are not yet happy with that. So, I could just keep increasing it. So let's let's solve again. Let's make it continue. Let's see where does that go. So what have we got? Finished. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you can start to see something a little bit odd. So we went from 195 to 220, and now we're jumping to 270. And the number of keeping it, of course. But whoa, okay, what's going on there? Let's check the average and average. So average we have 273 and average 400. Whoa, it seems to be getting even even worse. What is going on? So it's going to improve improve the accuracy and I will do that. Uh, I will pause and, and carry that. You don't want me to click on until all the time. So see you. Meanwhile, I have done 10 iterations. And it's going absolutely crazy. I mean, the maximum stress has gone to around almost 2000 megapascal. That makes absolutely no sense. And the more elements I throw at it, you can see I mean, the software is really adding more and more elements, more and more and more, refining, 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 refining. And um, what do we get? Well, something that is patently meaningless. So what is going on? Well, what's going on is that we have What's called in the trade a stress singularity. And stress singularities are annoying on one hand and on the other. Well, once you know what to do with them, it's not that bad. Well, the fact is that the theoretical stress here is actually infinity because we have got um, a radius of zero. So the theoretical stress at uh, at a point like this should be infinity. Now, obviously, in reality, in the real world, if you did an experiment, it would not be infinity. So why? What is going? Why is that? Well, there are different reasons. The first reason is that it is impossible to actually manufacture a 90 degree angle like that, very uh, a perfectly sharp angle. That when you do, when you use your, when you use tools, 
they always are going to actually be live uh, so to some uh, irregularity and imperfection. Very likely, actually, you'll be, you'll be a radius just due to the manufacturing. So that's reason number one. Manufacturing does not create straight corners like that. It's impossible. Reason number two, which I think is even more important, is that even if we had a super, I mean, incredible techniques using uh, atom manipulations, this kind of stuff, as soon as you put uh, a load, well, you're going to get a stress that's indeed very, very high. No doubt about that. If there is a very, if the stress is larger than the yield strength, strength of the material, oh, it's going to be for steel like that to be, I don't know, 400, uh, 400 uh, megapascal, something like that. Well, we get plastic deformation. Dislocations are going to be moving around. Plastic deformation just simply means the material is going to yield. Plastic deformations is going to create, to change the geometry here. And automatically, the, the part, as soon as a tiny load, the part would autofillet if you want. Dislocation would, would move and you would get. So there'll be some hardening as well. There'll be some hardening, but not enough to go to infinity, but also some actual, actual deformation of the part and that would automatically decrease the effect of the stress raises the stress singularity would actually disappear but there is no such thing going on in finite elements so we are stuck with uh, with stress singularities so how do you deal with stress singularity well essentially the main thing to do is to actually to ignore them um, there are different there are different ways to look at it, and I will put some uh, so links to to podcasts, uh, various podcasts and and, and and articles on this. But the, and there are slightly people have slightly different uh, different ways to look at it. But in essence, it boils down to the following: uh, number one, ignore them. As simple as that. Just ignore singularities. Now that's easier said than done, because in order to ignore a singularity, you first need to prove that you have got a singularity. So the point is that here, obviously, this is obviously, um, we are proving the singularity by doing a corner study, showing that it doesn't converse with the singularity, and we can basically ignore, ignore the stress. Just so we prove, so the number one, we prove that we have singularity, and we say, well, the stress there is not meaningful. I can tell you that every year at the coursework, I get students uh, who give me the maximum stress, and which is something along these lines, and it's totally mean, meaningless, and that's not that, that doesn't bode uh, very well. And so, ideally, you ignore it, and then you uh, you, you try to look where the, the the actual maximum stress is. So that can be a bit harder than uh, than it sounds. If act, if this is a real effect, and uh, maybe two, so you, uh, possibilities consist in um, adding a probe. And measuring measuring the the stress in the vicinity in the vicinity of uh, of the effect still it's still very large and then what, what we need to do is to prove that where the point the, the probe is the stress actually does converge which is easier said than uh, than done by the way um, another option another option sometimes easier to uh, to implement uh, but which will complicate the models consists in filleting the part. Saying, okay, it's going to be filleted anyway, naturally, by, uh, by the um, manufacturing process or by uh, plastic deformation. So just put a fillet. Now that's, that's a lovely idea. And uh, in many ways, it's very convenient. It makes life easier, but there's a cost. If we have a fillet, it's going to make the mesh more complicated. So we have a super nice, pretty mesh here and uh, filleting it adds some complication and makes the uh, makes the uh, the mesh less uh, less less symmetric, less efficient in general. So there is a cost to that simplicity. But on one hand, computer time is generally quite cheap, and human time, the yeah, analyst times, can uh, can be more expensive. So it, it's a choice you have to uh, to make whether you want to simplify your life and make the computer's life a bit more complicated. Or can you afford to do that? Then fillet it. Often, in fact, we do go the other way around. Often, what we want to do is remove fillets from model. I mean, I don't mean a simple, simple model like that, but a real, real part. You might want to actually de-feature it. 
and remove fillets. So and that is going to create singularities. So you will have to know that you have got some singularities around these parts, but they are not meaningful because they will be filleted. So the real stress is not there is no, no need to actually measure it because this is an artifact of a simplifying defeaturing the uh, the model. So singularities are a bit can be a bit of a headache, uh, especially when you approach them uh, at the beginning. In practice, it's relatively straightforward, really, uh, because you know that the, something has been defeatured and therefore it's not the simulation is not important. It's not important. Not important here. That can create problems that because the convergence business here, if we do it at the maximum, it will be tricked by the singularity. So if you have got the singularity, doing the convergence, automatic convergence, might not work. And therefore you might have to, uh, to be a bit smarter and <laughs> identify where the real non-singularity stress is here and then possibly do it by, uh, by hand using, using uh, mesh insert uh, sizing. This kind of thing. And I will look at that later. So that, that I think is the main issue of singularities. Yeah, it's easy enough to, uh, to ignore them, but, 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 but they still have some effects because a lot of the automatic tools actually rely on maxima and the maximum stress. Often, if there's singularity in the model, it is not to be trusted. Okay? So be aware of that. It, it's extremely important. If not, you're the, if, if not, well, the, you might be actually doing some work on, on stresses that are completely meaningless. And it's very perverse. Because the more elements you throw at it, the better the mesh you, uh, you invest in, in, in looking uh, at a value, well, the more wrong it's going to be. So be very aware of that. Okay. Well, I hope this was useful and thank you very much. Oh, as usual, uh, any queries, please use the form on Blackboard. Bye-bye. Thank you.